So let's start with APMPP, or this is what we call as the acute posterior multifocal pigment placoid epitheliopathy. Now this is a, uh, a syndrome which is usually seen in uh, bilaterally, it is asymmetric, usually seen in young women more commonly. And there is definitely an antecedent viral illness. And when you see the fundus, there are different stages. You have these kind of creamy, choroidal, uh, creamy placoid lesions in the posterior pole. And when we see the fundus, there are varying stages of evolution. So this is what it looks like on FFA. You have hypofluorescent areas. And ICG corresponding, you have hypo areas. And towards the later stages, these start staining, but the ICG remains the same. And in fact, it shows more lesions on the ICG than the FFA. So this is a typical pattern. Fluorescent angiography shows block early and then stain later. And ICG shows more hypo and more, more lesions. And uh, with, uh, uh, with time, the lesions tend to disappear on the ICG. And the uh, autofluorescence shows a mixed lesions. You can have hypo, you can have uh, mixed hypo and hyper. And usually there is a halo of hyper around these lesions. Now when we look at the OCTA, so this is something which has changed our thoughts about APMPP. And again, there is a disruption of the outer retinal layers and the retinal pigment epithelium. But this is something which, is, which we have uh, started learning now that initially we believed that APMPP was a disease of the retinal pigment epithelium. But the OCTA now shows large cho uh, choreocapillaries, non-perfusion or flow reduction. And these correspond to the areas of ICGA. So therefore, now we've started believing that APMPP could be more a, a, a result of choroidal or choreocapillary ischemia rather than a retinal pigment epithelial problem. So again, the acute phases resolve over weeks to months and the larger lesions leave with deeper pigmentation. Now we use the OCT and FFA and fundus autofluorescence to monitor these lesions. So, the, uh, uh, so these autofluorescence lesions tend to persist and they don't disappear. The next white dot syndrome is the serpiginous choroiditis and this has been described as large peripapillary helicoid lesions which extend from the disc. Now earlier it was thought to be autoimmune but in India we started to believe that this could be due to tuberculosis and many of our cases have responded to antitubercular therapy. And this is usually a result of inflammation of the choreocapillaries in the choroid and the retinal pigment epithelium. So this is a macular uh, serpiginous-like choroid, serpiginous choroiditis where you have hypo lesions on uh, fluorescent angiogram initially and then they start showing late staining. And towards the edge you start having hyp uh, hyper lesions like these which are fuzzy. This is what you see in the active stages and the FFA shows corresponding areas of um, uh, hypo lesions. Now, autofluorescence is an important modality now which we have uh, started using more often in following up these patients with serpiginous choroiditis. And this is a typical picture where you have these lesions healing and then you still have active lesions and we titrate our medications accordingly. So what do you see on the OCT? OCT, again, you see the thickening of the outer retina and this is what is called, sorry, this is what is called um, the waterfall effect which the pointer is not very strong, but in the choroid. And this is because of the hyperreflectance of the choroid. And what we see on the FFA, uh, on the OCT is disruption of the ellipsoid zone and the external limiting membrane. So again, OCT can be used and usually OCTA have shown areas of uh, capillary, choreocapillary non-perfusion, but the intervening areas usually appear okay. Now these are again serial uh, photographs of the same patient, though clinically it looks quite stable here, but uh, the fundus fluorescent lesion, uh, autofluorescence lesion still shows some activity. So we use multimodal imaging, especially if uh, fundus autofluorescence and OCT to monitor these lesions. Next other important uh, feature is multifocal choroiditis and panuveitis. This is the picture and the punctate inner choroidopathy. We do see a lot in our practice and we have started to believe that this is part of the same disease but different spectra. This punctate lesions are usually associated with very minimal vitritis in comparison with the multifocal choroiditis where you have a lot more vitritis. And nearly about 75 to 80 percent of these patients present with choroidal neovascular membranes and this could be an important tool to monitor. 
monitor them. So this is one of the pictures which I have borrowed from one of the journals which show the fundus autofluorescent pictures, the late fluorescent angiography and the ICGA and one can monitor the CNVMs as well. Now this is a very interesting case which we had of a sympathetic ophthalmia with multiple white dots and progressive subretinal fibrosis. So these are associated with very poor uh, prognosis. And uh, you use, uh, this is the FFA picture and the ICG. Unfortunately, at this particular time, we didn't have the OCTA with us. So we still don't know whether it is because of the choroidal granulomas or is it capillary non-perfusion causing these many uh, hypo areas. The other important uh, uh, white dot is the mutes, which is usually an acute multifocal unilateral disease which usually occurs in young women and there is a prodrome of a viral illness. And one of the important clinical variant is this foveal agranularity. You can have very tiny dots like this or it can be some things like these placoid kind of lesions. And this looks quite similar to what we see in APA and PPA as well. And again, the fundus fluorescent angiogram shows these wreath-like pattern of hyperfluorescence. Uh, 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 and when we do the autofluorescence, though there aren't many lesions, at least we believe that there are no lesions here clinically, but the autofluorescence shows much more lesions than what we clinically see. And here you have these kind of hyperreflective material on the retinal pigment epithelium, breaks in the interdigitation zone and also in the uh, ellipsoid and the external limiting membrane. So these usually have a good prognosis, but what is something interesting in this is we initially believed that this could be a choreocapillary non-perfusion, but the on-phase OCT has shown these kind of lesions, hypopigmented lesions, and uh, the choreocapillary level is otherwise normal. So mutes is probably as a result of sick and mottled RPE rather than any choreocapillary issues. So again, these patients have uh, enlarged blind spot. So uh, these are changes which uh, uh, are thinking about these disorders have changed with the advent of OCTA. Again, this is something which we don't see in our part of the world because we don't have this HLA 829 uh, predisposition. These uh, patients are associated with poor vision. There's a lot of vitritis and retinal vasculitis in these patients and they require immune suppression. So these are the pictures which I borrowed from Dr. Rao. The classical, you have these creamy lesions. They radiate from the optic nerve head. And the retinal vasculitis is an important component of bird shot and the fluorescent angiography is used to monitor these lesions and whether they're responding to uh, immune suppression. And again, ICG shows hypofluorescent lesions and uh, these lesions tend to reduce with therapy. And OCT is an important tool because CME is one of the more major causes of visual loss in these patients and this can be used for monitoring them. Again, this is how the pathology, unlike the other white dot syndromes, birdshot, they have had autopsied uh, eyes and uh, this shows uh, both non-granulomatous and granulomatous inflammation uh, in the choroidal area and also around the retinal vessels which could contribute to the retinal vasculitis. Again, uh, there are mimickers to the white dot syndrome, for example, this patient with sarcoid granulomas and one can see large granulomas in the OCT. And, um, Again, this is another patient who just presented with just disc edema and there are, uh, the ICG shows many hypo, hypo dots and these can be followed up with treatment. Now, based on the better understanding of uh, uh, the pathology in these uh, eyes, a newer classification is being proposed, uveitic syndromes with choroidal-based pathology, which includes sympathetic ophthalmia, or systemic syndromes with choroidal-based pathology like VKH or sarcoid. And depending on where the pathology is, is it outer retinal or choreocapillary based pathology? Again, multifocal choroiditis with, without vitritis where pick and histoplasmosis fit in and with vitritis where all the others fit in. And of course, you have other mimickers like the neoplasms and infections. So we have a long way to go, but this has laid a path for us to understand these diseases better.